Hello, my name is Emmett McConnell, and this is a second look, a series where I break down the big plays and goals in MLS. If you enjoy this content, consider liking and subscribing. In this episode, I'll break down the match between the Los Angeles Galaxy and the Vancouver Whitecaps. This was a high-scoring affair, and both teams ended up being reliant on finding long outlets to quickly expose the other defense. Each defense seemed unable to communicate how to track these runs, and it caused a lot of problems for the back lines. Let's take a second look. Right off the bat, it's worth noting how important Christian Pavone is to how the Galaxy play. With Ibrahimovic in the team, the Galaxy, under any coach so far, tends to play to his strengths, using Zlatan as a holdup man and running off of him, essentially playing long balls. Pavone offers a second option to that play, a second outlet. If Ibrahimovic was the only outlet, teams could swarm him, and make that tactic difficult. But with Pavone, now there is a long option. Someone who can punish teams with pace when too much focus is put on Ibrahimovic. And against Vancouver, it worked tremendously. The fullbacks, Eric Godoy and Brett Levis, struggled to mark him, both long and short. With Roman Alessandrini close to return from injury, there are two potent outlets for the Galaxy to use, should Ibrahimovic not be an option. First, let's look at Pavone getting long for the Galaxy's first goal. Like many in this match, this one started with a quick long ball forward. Jonathan Dos Santos launches it from deep in his own half, with plenty of time to pick out a man. And let's freeze here to see how Vancouver react. Eric Odoi, normally a center back, is playing right back, and Christian Pavone gets behind him. There's no recognition that Dos Santos is about to make this pass. There's no drop-off, no communication with Jesser Kamiri, and just like that, LA Galaxy get behind the defense. Pavone takes on Kamiri and is able to get a cross-off despite some pretty good defending. Now for the second place the defense lets off. Godoy drops to Pavone, but never enough to really help his defender. He needs to actually provide support and help Kamiri in a double team, or drop into center back as Kamiri is now drawn out wide. At the same time, Andy Rose is jogging alongside Zlatan Ibrahimovic who scores the goal but he doesn't actually look over his shoulder and keep him in check. He doesn't move into a position where he can actually block this cutback cross around the penalty area. Rose is just too slow, and Ibrahimovic and Pavone punish the Vancouver high block. Vancouver ends up retaking the lead, and once again, this comes down more to a lack of defending and a bit of luck than good attacking play. The cross comes from deep, and the Galaxy are in a good position to defend it, but look how much space there is here at the top of the box. There are no midfielders anywhere in sight throughout this play, and the three Galaxy defenders in the box have to now deal with a 3v3. The header isn't cleared far enough, and Michael Chirinos gets the ball at the top of the box under no real pressure. Rolf Felcher, the right back, can't really close him down aggressively without the fear of being beat. And now comes the overlapping run from Russell Tybert, and it's a 4v3. The Galaxy needs some kind of back pressure here to force Chirinos into a mistake. Any good defense will not allow opponents to have this kind of time in zone 14 at the top of the box. Chirinos does the right thing here first and cuts inside, but then makes the wrong decision with the shot. He takes Felcher in, and now he should be making the reverse pass for Tybert into the half space. The three Vancouver forwards, including Bear and Ricketts, do a poor job of spacing now. The 3v3 is easily covered by the Galaxy at this point in this really tight area in the box. Though Bear scores on this deflection, he should think about dropping off for a cutback or maybe making this run. Though with how open Tybert is here, it would just pull Defender over to him. But in this position, it's usually a good run. Meanwhile, Ricketts needs to peel off towards the back post. Had both players made this movement, Chirinos would have had a lot more space for a shot, dribble, or pass. In fact, Steris ends up making the block, and I'll put the blame on Bear for his positioning. However, he does get some good fortune as the ball falls to him, and then finishes it off. Pavone drops deep to get this ball, and he brings center back Daniil Henry with him. This ends up opening up space for Uriel Antuna's eventual run. Jonathan Dos Santos creates space away from Henry, who continues to pressure him, and then drops off. And it's Toussaint Ricketts, the forward, who doesn't continue the press. This allows Dos Santos to get his head up and find a pass, which he ends up doing and finding Antuna. Ricketts as the forward needs to help his center back have the time to get back in position by forcing Dos Santos to put his head down and play under pressure. By not doing that, Antuna now just has to run off the left back Brett Levis' shoulder, and at this point there's no cover from Henry, and Antuna is now able to get into the channel. Max Crapo sees the danger, and he comes out a little bit but he should stay in his line, but coming out halfway he puts himself in no man's land. He probably doesn't have the time to react to a shot unless it's right at him. A pass would take him out of the play, and he can quite easily be chipped, which is exactly what Antuna does under pressure from Levis. Any three of those options would have taken Crapo out of the play, and he just needs to be more decisive in either staying in his line or coming all the way out. And in this situation, it should certainly have been staying on his line. 
in this play, the Galaxy have some midfielders back and actually look okay, barring this missed mark. Pavone doesn't get back to mark the opposing fullback, Godoy, who ends up getting the assist on this play. Mark Dos Santos probably picked Godoy at right back specifically to mark Pavone, not for his attacking ability. It's two flat passes across the middle to swing the ball toward the right before Huang Inbom makes the slotted pass for Godoy, with just the perfect amount of pace for the fullback to hit a first time cross under pressure. Those two flat passes could probably have been skipped with a single pass from Chirinos to Inbom, which would have given Godoy just a little bit more time for this cross, but there ends up being just enough that he gets it off before Pavone can get a foot in. Fair play to Pavone as it's a great effort to make up for his lack of initial positioning. At the moment of this cross, let's look at the defensive positioning. David Romney, the left back, is in no man's land and probably should have committed to closing down Godoy, but just sort of lingers in this space. Polenta slows up as the cross comes in, but he should be aware of how much space is between him and the goal and continue moving towards it. Ideally, his movement would be here towards the near post, while Daniel Steris would move here towards the back post. The biggest issue, however, is that Polenta isn't in line with the rest of his defense. He can see Romney is here and should at very least be in line with him. Serra should not be forced to be behind Polenta in tracking this runner. If anything, he should be slightly ahead, while Polenta is the one farther back. Now Ricketts is goal side on Polenta, who can't get in front of him to make a clearance on the cross, and Steris can't get in front of him to block him. I was fairly critical on the Galaxy defensively here, and this isn't even their worst defensive display of this game. Vancouver attacked well, and deserves some praise for this play, so why not give it to them? They haven't gotten a lot this year, and I think this play earned just a bit. So first I'll give credit to Inbaum for the slotted pass to Godoy. It's well-timed, and with just enough pace that he can hit it first time, and then again I'll give some credit to Godoy for making this first time cross behind the defense. He clips it up just enough that Polenta can't make a play on it, and it's right between the two center backs, so that Ricketts can just get up and redirect it on goal. And finally, credit to the forward, who does just that. He splits the center backs and sees his opportunity to get behind Polenta, and then makes a great leap and connects sweetly to power it past Matt Lampson and goal. It was one of Vancouver's nicer plays in this match. The Galaxy then equalize, and guess what? It's another long ball for Ibrahimovic. Polenta is the one who plays it, and it's usually either him or Dos Santos who are tasked with finding the outlet on these plays. Despite a few defensive lapses, Polenta has done a great job offensively for the Galaxy in finding these long passes. Chris Pontius, the substitute, starts outside of Ibra and comes around to the inside with his run. He runs through Daniil Henry's challenge and then puts it away. Now for the last goal. I know the Galaxy wanted to win. They could have done just a little bit more to secure the draw here, and while it might not have done that much in the playoff picture, at least it wouldn't have looked this bad. Steris is now the only defender back, and he tries to get tight to Freddy Montero and prevent him from doing anything. Ideally, this should probably just be a foul. There's not much else he can do now. He should take down Montero as the ball comes into the forward. It's probably too far away from goal to be a red, and if he does it early enough, maybe not a yellow, but if a yellow is the worst case scenario here, Steris should take it. Instead, Montero gets to the first touch and then just launches it upfield for the 2v0. RSL still need to win on the final day with a Galaxy loss or draw to overtake them in fourth for the last home playoff spot. So I think the Galaxy were just all in for this win to try to get into second or third. It didn't mean too much in the end for the playoff positioning, but the Galaxy will have to hope this doesn't become a habit and won't happen again. Thanks for watching a second look. If you like this video, please like, share, or subscribe. Until next time, I'm Emmett McConnell. Have a great day.